Okay, I want to tell a story about um, num the number family tree. And basically, I, I'm interested in, um, you know, why primes are so important. So, okay, so I've made a little family tree here of, of numbers. And I've also borrowed some pictures from the internet as well, describing the types of numbers. So, um, if we look at if we look at this one, we've got, you know, our larger numbers that we, uh, the bigger group of numbers that we talk about in mathematics, uh, are complex numbers, and um, and complex numbers are things that we don't really look at in high school until year thirteen calculus. So complex numbers can be broken down into real numbers and real numbers oops, real numbers and imaginary numbers okay and basically in imaginary numbers uh, there's a rule in, in in usual mathematics is when you squ you can't square root a negative but then they made up they decided to break the rules and make up their own numbers imaginary numbers and if you square root the minus one you get a number called i Anyway, you will look at that when you get to year 13 calculus. But that's a long way down the track, so we don't have to worry about it now. If we look at these things here, see the complex numbers. I within those are the real numbers. And within those, we've got rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, and we've got irrational numbers. And here's another look at it. They've got the, the real numbers here, what we look at mostly, and outside of these imaginary numbers, they've decided to make some stuff up. Okay. Now, so with the real numbers, this is where we, w the world that we're going to be working in. Um, and so we've got irrational numbers, which include this number pi, and also square root of some primes. Um, and this is another, another letter, a number called e. And we're not going to look at those now, but they, each of those are very interesting and got an interesting backstory. But the rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction, as a over b, for example. So another example, the number 5, we can express that as 5 over 1. How many 1s fit into 5? There's 5. So, you know, a lot of numbers can be expressed as rational numbers. Most numbers, well, a lot of numbers. And so once we've got the rational numbers, um, ones that can, um, so this number here, 5, is actually an integer. And the integers are these kind of whole numbers and negative numbers. So the whole numbers are these ones over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we've got the, the negative numbers here. You can have negative fractions because you can be in between there. You could be, that would be about minus 1.4, okay? Um, would be my estimate of that. And so we've got integers, which, and here we go, we've got zero, we've got the positive numbers, which are the natural numbers, and the negative numbers. And within the positive natural numbers, we've got primes and composites, or composites, depending on how you pronounce that. Okay, now, the primes, the key about the primes is they are the building blocks of all the rational numbers. So all these rational numbers here can be built up by combinations of primes. And that's what we've been looking at. So let's have a look. For example, the composite number 36, it's composite because, well, 36 is like 4 times 9, isn't it? And 4, I can break that down. It's a composite number 2. I can break that down to 2 by 2. And then 9 is the same as 3 times 3. So I've got, I can break that composite number down into my prime factorization, which is that. And a rational number, which is a fraction, here's one here. I could break that down too. Well, we already know what the bottom is. It's 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And on the top, that's 4 times 3, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 3. And I've broken that fraction, that rational number, down into its prime components. But actually, I can simplify that fraction. I don't have to write it like that. I can write that as, well, so because I've got a 2 on a 2 over here, um, 2, that can cancel with that because, you know, 2 over 2 is the same as 1. And when you multiply anything by 1, so 5 times 1, you get 5. 
so they can cancel out and so can this and so can this so we end up with on the top all of these things would be like times and by one and so on the top we have a one and on the bottom we have a three now you may have noticed you may have been able to simplify that another way without going all the way down to the prime components we could have said that well that's the same as um, you know one lot of 12 and on the bottom we've got three lots of 12 and so I cancelled out the 12 with the 12 and I get one on three which is that now uh, rational numbers they can all because they're all um, like a fraction one way that we can think of them is like a rectangle a ratio of sides of rectangles so for instance here I've got one that I've made one by three and this one here is two by six it's twice as long twice as wide so it's the same ratio but it's just a different size and this one is three by nine so that's one way that you can think of rational numbers and um, you know what the Pythagoreans used to think about it as well all numbers could be put like this and so they they thought rational numbers were nice and logical that way see and and this number here I've got one on three now if I it's just the reason that uh, one and three and two and six are the same is because I could just change the scale I could change the scale so I just went up like that so that same that same ratio that I had there would be the same as one two three it was the same as six and two so it's two on six is the same as one on third just if I change the scale if I multiply the top and the bottom by the same amount so and and then the same could be done with these other ones so there's different ways that we can think about it but the key message here is the primes are important because they're the building blocks of the rational numbers and if we understand that then dealing with these becomes very easy